Hello, I'm Robbie. Yeah, my name's Ed Fink. Uh, I'm a tennis room producer uh, from France. Yeah. Sorry, I just want to start the presenter. My name's Laurie Yates and I'm the uh, community uh, participation and um, engagement inclusion person for tennis and a fact. Um, we haven't got a presentation, but um, we're just really going to talk a bit about the tennis food project and the couple of projects we've been doing um, recently with older people um, and technology which we thought you might have been interested in. <laughs> um, Tennyson started in 19... I don't know if anyone knows about the Tennyson project, but it started in 1999 um, as a pilot that was run by um, FACT, which is where me and Ed work, um, the Foundation for Art and Creative Technology on Wood Street. Um, the Club has an action, action trust, which were a government quango that was set up to um, redevelop, reimagine, or demolish the tower blocks in Liverpool. Um, and Superflex were an artist collective who are still practicing now, who specialised in relational artwork, so everything that was based on an issue. Um, and the issue in this particular case, in Tennyson's case, was the rehousing of social housing tenants that had lived in the tower blocks since probably the 1960s. So when the project started, there was 68 tower blocks. Um, and when, um, if basically when the tower blocks were redeveloped, there was only 11 left. Um, so the idea was to come up with a project that would utilise technology, um, training for older people, a particular older tenants group called um, the, the High Rise Tenants Association, um, and they were based in um, they were based in Hello Towers and in Coronation Court, which was a massive tower block. And so the idea they came up with was the Super Channel, which was um, the UK's first online TV station um, for one for and by the tenants of the social housing um, flats in, in Liverpool. And using the internet to live stream um, one hour magazine style discussion shows um, so that, they, that basically the tenants and the residents could meet um, their landlords in a space that uh, um, in a space that was social um, but also offered accountability. So obviously when they were streaming back then it was a uh, dial and they used a particular non open source platform. Yeah, so it was real producer. For a real producer. Um, and when the stream actually came out, I mean I was around then but... We've seen some footage. <laughs> it's like tiny but for those residents it was like really amazing that someone somewhere in the world would be watching their their program with their landlords talking about their issues from their living rooms from their right. living rooms um, and and could be well, maybe be responding they did used to have a chat facility didn't mm -hmm. they on so basically the pro the project was a really early pioneer of live streaming um, and we still do a bit of live streaming now we um, neil's kind of doing a bit of at using live stream.com and we started using that during the project we did at the Tate for the fifth floor um, program. So at uh, fifth floor exhibition. So today we're just going to talk a little bit really about some of the older people's programmes we've been working on. Um, obviously since the rise in the internet and all kinds of digital technologies and um, most people are online, you know, me and Liam were talking about it before, there's probably 55% um, access now in the city, I don't know, 100, really 100%, but when Tennyson started it was about 5% of people were online, so obviously it's really changed the whole scene, all the, <coughs> all the, the way people use the internet, the way people watch programmes on the internet, the community content that, that is produced online has really changed, people kind of make it themselves and stuff, but there are people who are really still very digitally excluded, um, and so one of the things we try to do as a project is to come up with innovative arts, practice-based ways to bring the internet to people who are excluded. And some of these people are over 60, 65. They do want to use the internet. There's three different reasons, really. It's economic ignorance and, it, well, you know, not really known. And also, mostly, it's because people just don't know why they'd even bother. And I know for us in this room, that's why like totally shocking. But for them, like, they've lived for 80 years and have never used the internet, so why would they just suddenly start now? Um, so some of our work is kind of around making the internet interesting and accessible. Um, we first started using social media as a project 
in 2007. Um, the project was called the Bold Street Project and we worked with a, um, she called herself a social media evangelist called Katie Lips <coughs> and that blog is still live. Um, it's uh, it's uh, Bold Street, the boldstreet.co.uk forward slash blog and it's still live, people still comment on it, we've had all kinds of interesting things happen on and that was just a WordPress blog. Old lovers. Old, Old lovers and me throwing online, good. you know, all brought yeah. together by this topic, which is, yeah. is Bold Street. Bank bonds. The bank bonds. It's all yeah. millionaires, but yeah. I think they're Because Bell Street has about eight banks. And so people will come in uh, on the WordPress and say to us, listen, I've got this bank bond from this bank that should die in it. Do you think I'm like rich? And I was like, well, I'll look into it for you. So it was, a, it, it was a forum, really. And we used the social media to engage with older people, to help them understand how it loads of <coughs> content that included them and their personality onto the internet would be a positive thing because people could then engage with them and their stories that would make their stories <coughs> live and current rather than just something they tell their child or their grandchild and they didn't want to listen. So we used WordPress back then, Flickr, um, and we used um, Skype, but we used a, an 0151 phone number that was attached to the Skype and people would leave two and a half minute messages on it and then we'd rip it off with audio hijacker and use uh, iTunes and stuff to disseminate the information. So the whole thing with Tennyson is this, the stories, it's all about co collecting and gathering stories and making sense of them. And um, one of the most recent projects we did was the one that you did, Gaslight to Satellite. Yeah. <coughs> Which was, we, a lot of the work we do is collaborations with housing associations and this one was with LMH. Yeah. Would you like if I, I'll read Dorothy's poem, it sort of gives a bit of context to the project. I won't be those drivers in, but uh, LMH asked us if you want the chance to enter a play about a song and a dance. A group was formed and a play was born by sheltered tenants who had become forlorn. Fact and tenants were both involved, and with their help, the play evolved. We learned new songs, how things have changed, to us technology seems so strange. So rehearsals are now underway, we hope you'll support us on the day. We'll try our best to get things right, but you can judge us on the night. So that was a poem that Dolly wrote about um, the project with them. So it's called Connected from Gaslight to Satellite. Um, and this was really about looking at the attitudes of sheltered housing residents towards technology. Um, to start off with, we were quite ambitious and thought, let's make a website, get everyone online, start blogging. But there's a conversation that had to happen before that about why they'd even want to. Um, and it's perfectly understandable really that they're not digital natives. They've not had a blog or a phone since the age of nine, I think. A lot of people had never even been on the internet before we started working with them. So there had to be sort of reason. So it, it became more of a conversation about um, being connected, and that's where the title came from, really. Um, it was interesting, I was talking to a lady, and she was posting on Facebook, so it's a great idea, I love it. Um, talking about why it's great, and why people are connected. So I said, you're on Facebook? She's like, oh, no, 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 not at all. But her grandkids use it, and all her family use it. So she sort of understood why she liked to use it, but just didn't want to. Um, so we sort of worked with an artist over six months, uh, for Alison Kershaw, she's based in Manchester, and she works with communities. Um, and she'd spoken to the group, and they'd done a, a pantomime the year before, and they were quite keen to do a performance. We based it all around technology. Um, so here's another poem. Well, this is the last song in the uh, performance that came out. It's uh, staying connected at the end of the line, keeping in touch with each other, staying alive. Out of the voices, the tears and the smiles, the click of connection, it's all in the wires. I know their stories, I lived all their lives. The lies of the lover, the fears and the sighs. Staying connected, it's all we can do. As long as we're talking, we know we'll pull through. Um, I think the thing that came through from this project the most was sort of the positivity around technology and how people embraced it really. Um, <laughs> There's one more, I, I like this <laughs> quite a lot. Um, this is from a song called The Television Song. And this verse is When we were children, we used to play outside. Now here's the future playing out before our eyes. When we were young, the world was small, small enough to crawl inside. This box will open up the whole world. Uh, we hope our kids survive. And so it was just it was quite an interesting project to sort of talking to them about why they wanted to use technology. Since then, all of the people involved are now using the blog and 
we're talking to each other on it, um, and it's sort of baby steps for us. But I think we're sort of involved with the Go On It's Liverpool campaign, and there's sort of this idea of giving an hour to people, but I think it's about giving a lot more and engaging people with this kind of technology. Um, our sort of main vehicle for this is producing video as well, and sort of um, engaging people to make their own video content and have their say online as well. Um, Way to give it. Now, we can waffle on about tenants been forever, but I don't know. Is there anything that we want to know about the project? I suppose the thing, the thing for us now is, well, sort of 11 years ago, it was a very specific project about working in a tower block with a community live broadcasting. Now it's a very different environment. So we've got a lot of housing partners and sort of working with people to look at issues around technology and engaging older people. Yeah, that's good. Oh, can I ask a question? Yeah. How many um, bath centres are out there around the country? Just one. Just one in Liverpool. Oh. And nothing else like that? I mean, there's organisations similar. Manchester, you've got to call my house, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, they're kind of similar. Well, um, I think why don't you? When you go and report. Interact with them. Why don't them? we interact with them? Um, yeah, we do. I think we do interact with them. I mean, for me, no, then. No, what I say, why don't you? I mean, why don't we have people to interact with them? Well, I think, Jean, this is, this is part of the problem of having our project based on fact. Sort of the general, well, I'm not generalising massively, but the demographic of fact isn't social house residents mm. that don't, aren't on the internet to be finding out about what's going on there. So, even like some of the people we brought in that haven't been to the city centre for sort of five years, then trying to tell them that coming to fact is a great idea. and Go on the internet is a great idea. It was a big jump, really. Um, and for a lot of people, just around it wasn't a great idea. And it's, I was talking to one lady, and her husband came to one of our workshops, and she just didn't want to engage with me or the internet or fact or anything. And um, just from talking to her, I ended up talking about food, and I'd like to talk about food, I want to talk about food. And uh, <laughs> by the end of the conversation, she was Googling recipes and printing print off 300 recipes, in fact. <laughs> but that was the sort of hook that, and we started having a conversation about. How all this information is out there, but it's not natural at all. She couldn't understand how I said I'd, I'd sit on my phone in the supermarket and Google what recipes I've got to cook dinner, and that's completely alien to her. Um, she's cookery books, but if that knowledge wasn't within her, she'd ask people, but it's, mm -hmm. it's quite a big jump, really. We, we also built a, a blog for this um, project and got people commenting on there and they're sharing information on there now. But you know, this, is, this is very much a start. This is about sort of attitudes um, towards technology, and then the work we're doing now is building on that really. And the work Laura's doing now, we've got another project within Sheltered Housing Schemes in Liverpool, and trying to develop that more. We were looking at using iPads. Um, I know, I mean, that's quite a cardinal sin to some of the people in this room, but the interface is so simple. Um, we'll look at the work David hockney has been doing with his brushes app, and that's an access point for us to talk about art and how you can use technology to create art. Um, but that's very early stage, isn't it? And that's the conversation we've got at the moment, and to grow that with people in the scheme to see what they want to do, really. I think it'd be a good idea if you can interact with people from outside of Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what we, we do use the internet to do that. And actually, the project originally, um, the first five years of the project, they took all the high rise tenants from, uh, from Liverpool all around the place. They went to New York and uh, Copenhagen, because that's where the artists were who started the tenants of the project. But one of the, um, you know, Skype is really good for all the people, all the people love Skype, it's like amazing to them, you know, seeing like having a telepresence experience with someone in a different country. So we've used Skype a lot as well, you know, just because it's just, for us it's like, why would that be so interesting? But, but well, for the, the, the residents we work with, it's like magic, you know, it's like some magic is happening and they're saying it's not in real time, you know, like... And also there's, coming up as well, there's sort of changes in welfare reform, there's a lot of services are going online, and it sort of, it feels like if people can't access these services, they'll be missing out on a lot of things, like the property pool, you can't go on a property pool unless you're online, and you can apply for a house now, and it's sort of... And, but then, to, to be honest, to us, that's not an interesting reason for people to go online, I think it's about creativity and working with artists as well. And that's the tool that we use to get people engaging with the internet and really, things. In this, we sort of cheat to start off with. We put the um, song, record the songs onto video, 
No, both went to the website, so the participants had to go to Oh, I wasn't singing, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they'd watch the videos to learn the songs, and it's sort of cheating to get people using the internet, but it's, uh, there's, there's so much information on there. I think there's a statistic about, I think it's 9% of people over 60 who use the internet, but of that, 10% uh, of the two, they get 60% uh, of all the information from the internet, and it's just a resource for people. But it's also it's promoting that in a way that isn't patronising, um, is genuine as well. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Sam gave with a program for a musical in my hand, it's like, if, but it was, I can guarantee it wasn't patronising at all. <laughs> but yeah, I think we can waffle on forever, yeah, but we talk forever. these are quite specific examples of working in specific communities in sheltered housing in Liverpool. We work across sort of Liverpool and North West as well, um, but these are quite sort of niche examples we thought we'd talk about. I was just wondering, sort of, I've come across other very small kind of similar types of, of project in yes. terms of working with old people and that narrative knowledge stories kind of thing. I was wondering if you've worked with anybody who perhaps uh took from dementia, mm -hmm. it being a sort of it's a growing issue. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it is, yeah. I wonder if you had any experience in growing that. We haven't worked specifically with dementia. The house associations we work with have various projects. Um, but as I don't know, as a sort of they're quite sort of more focused on the software outcomes, I think. It's about sort of confidence building. Um, Connectivity, communication. Because one of the things we, we work, I mean, there, there is a few dementia projects in Liverpool. There's one in the National Museum of Liverpool, and there's one in um, Collective Encounters, who are a community theatre company operating in Everton. Um, one of the things we are really interested in is loneliness in older people. Um, we feel that connectivity, not us, you know, the groups that the Swensman is an old project, you know, it's got a lot of it, um, you know, older people who have who have gone through this process and are now like engaged the internet, you know, but it, it does really promote connectivity and communication and feeling part of part of something and we will feel part of something in real time and you know, in the real world here and online, you know, so it's about helping older people to to understand how this is relevant to them too, you know. But we don't specifically work with dementia, although you do come across it, you know, everything interlocks, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's the, the example you yeah, of Skype man and the working social services, and oh, okay. the, the, the teleco system that we've got, yeah. there's a direct link where somebody gets into trouble and you can direct yeah. contact somebody, and there's a gentleman who was using it because he just wanted somebody to talk to. Yeah. So yeah. it would have been great to just be able to talk yeah, yeah. about you know, there's a laptop, there's Skype. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, in, instead of sort of using the system in a way that goes to the yeah. But I, I can just see it, it's so much potential. Yeah. It's just getting over that hurdle. Yeah. It's, it's just getting over it. And that's why we're using tablets in particular, iPads. Because iPads are very intuitive. And I don't know if you've noticed how many older people who are digitally engaged do use tablets specifically iPads because they're so, you know, you really can get it quite quickly, you know. So the idea is that through this project we'll leave these tablets in all the schemes we're working in and there'll be a, a Wi-Fi connection that they can come and just interact on their own with, uh, with the computer. I, said, I think at the heart of our work it's about the conversation, it's like the technology and the project are almost incidental. And that we had a woman, I was quoting her, and she came to Tentspin for about eight years. And when she was asked why she came, she said, I want to learn how to edit. And she's been saying this for eight years, and she's never made a film. <laughs> but she came to Tennant Spin just to have a chat and meet people, and it was a social thing for her. And she was convinced she owned Tennant Spin as well, and I, mean, I think she did really, in a way. Um, but yeah, and yeah, I remember she came with her camera, and she said, I can't find the HD car. It's like, it's a tape, video camera, that's not, it's not working with <laughs> the tape. But it wasn't about the technology, it wasn't about her making films. She's in a lot of films, and she's got a lot to say, but. It's that social element and that conversation that's at the heart, I think. And the technology is almost incidental. It has to work alongside the people that are taking part, really. And it's an empowering experience. I mean, one of the things I noticed about tennis when I first started was that all the art parties, when everyone was like bladders and like staggering that, all the tenants were there as well. And all of them were there, you know. Because that's, you know, it was, it was about kind of giving 
these, these tenants a different kind of outlook. And John McGurk, actually, he's just died not long ago, but he was like a great example of that, wasn't he? They knew him. Um, and he was an amazing spoon playing guy. And uh, when he died, his family came to fact, and we showed them all the outputs online that he was involved in, and they were just well, like, what? 10 I yeah, thought he was so making it up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that he was like playing spoons with this amazing bass player, who's that guy? Doug Wimbish. Doug, yeah. Doug Wimbish, and there's films of him everywhere, you know. And it's not just the tenants, but all the different art communities. Well, that's, John, John is the poster boy for <laughs> community art, and the tenants been like, he, he said he had a, another life once he retired, and he had sort of a lot of time when he came to the fact that he got involved in this project and did some amazing things. I think it's technology just a part of that, but it's about meeting people and embracing and sort of living to the max as well. Really. It's a tool. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>